Okay, um, aloha. Welcome to another edition of Military in Hawaii, and I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And for those of you who may not have seen the program before or are not that familiar with it, here in the program we're going to be dealing with a lot of different issues that concern the military and the veterans community. And not that it's going to be um, uh, just strictly about that. Every once in a while we'll be talking about other issues that uh, you know affect all of us here in the community. But right now we are concentrating on the uh, military and veterans community. In the future, what we're going to be doing is bringing information uh, to the public about uh, some of the things you may not know that's affecting the military and veterans community. Um, as I try to remind people, like 1% of the total population here in the United States is serving our, mil uh, serving our country. You know, So there are a lot of people, it's not in for the glory or the money, it's about uh, taking care of and serving our country. You know, Many of them have given up a lot of lucrative careers you know, because they truly believe in what they're doing. And I do believe that as a uh, the citizens out there, that we have an obligation to make sure that any rights or privileges that they've earned, you know, are maintained and aren't being lost anyhow. <coughs> Excuse me. On, um, there's a lot of different issues that we deal with, like with the VA, uh, also systemic problems uh, within the government. And we will be talking with people who make the policies, and we invite your input. If there, you've been through the system, and there's something that you want to impart that's going to help another fellow veteran or someone in the military, or the community in general, please give us a call here, and we'll be more than happy to get you on the air to have you share that information. But right now, here on the program today, I want to welcome uh, Mr. Lee Lavelle, nice. and also Kim Pennington Lavelle, who's with the Optimum Wound Care. And also Dennis Siki, who would be joining us also. Thank you. Uh, Dennis has been on the program before. Thanks and for uh, also, Kim, mm -hmm. you've been here before also. Thank you for yes. having us back. Yeah. Uh, for those who didn't see our previous program, uh, could you recap what, we, you know, what your company is about? What Certainly. About? Uh, we are a <coughs> wound consulting firm. Mm -hmm. uh, we specialize in working with different centers, different hospitals, different home health agencies, and uh, hopefully the VA, mm -hmm. uh, working with their teams to try to optimize the wound program, the management of that. Right. We want to decrease the time it takes to heal the wounds mm -hmm. and uh, decrease the cost that it takes to yeah. heal wounds. Yeah, that's one thing. I know that, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I get all choked up when I talk about <laughs> this. Um, <coughs> when um, we talked last time, mm -hmm. I know that you mentioned you were trying to get in touch with the uh, VA or the system to... Yes. Um, introduce what you have, okay? Um, I know that it seemed like there's been a little bit of a um, hang up as far as yes. making that happen. Um, I know that in the past, my personal experience with people I've talked to who tried to introduce certain things into the system that would be beneficial to veterans, you know, mm -hmm. and possibly overall save on costs, you know, mm -hmm. not only to the system, but to the VA, I mean, to the individuals, you know. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, there seems to be a lag or some disconnect yeah. where the information is not being, get, you know, not gotten to the the approving uh, authorities, you know. Yes. And again, as I mentioned, we're not questioning the ability of the doctors at the VA, At you know. All. But the thing is, there are certain yeah. things that they may not be aware of that, you know, could be beneficial. And again, with you dealing with um, the system and all the minutiae that goes along with it, you know, it, the thing is, the bottom line, it affects our troops, it affects the overall, bet, you know, uh, competency of right. the of the organization. It yeah. does. We, we have... Um, done some contacting and tried to get in to just talk a little bit more to offer our services. Mm -hmm. You are spot on. We absolutely are an extension of the physician. Yeah. The physician has that expertise. Mm -hmm. um, we have been dealing in um, wounds for over 24 years now wow. uh, and so have a lot of expertise that we can couple with the physician. The other thing we do is we bring all the team members together. Mm -hmm. So we bring dietary and therapy and nursing and the physician and the most important, the patient right. together and work as a team mm -hmm. to try to optimize the solution of getting that wound closed. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's the most important and by doing that and having accountability mm -hmm then we can actually decrease the cost that right. it takes and decrease the time it takes to heal the wound. Yeah. One of the things that um, uh, is a fact when you're dealing with the VA is that sometimes it takes time to get the benefits to kick in. Mm -hmm. So in the meantime, that's coming out of the veterans and the families' pockets. Okay. 
So if there is something, a lag in the system before these people are getting their benefits and they have to foot the bill for this, it should be something that, of course, this system, startup service, you, should, you know, like what you're providing, um, could help to alleviate some of the financial, you know, burdens that we're dealing with right now, you know. And do you deal with a lot of, I mean, do you do a lot of veterans who are in that situation? We deal with a lot of centers who have veterans uh -huh. that have been in that situation. They are yeah. now where they are getting care, but there are so many veterans out there, yeah. just as you said, who haven't gotten the care mm -hmm. that they need. And the simple solutions that we can offer <coughs> will decrease the veterans' cost. I yeah. mean, some um, different dressings or different... Um, amount of dressing changes that they do sometimes are not as necessary mm -hmm. and so we can decrease the time that it takes to actually deal with the wound yeah. you know to cleanse it to dress it but also decrease the amount of dressings mm -hmm. that they would have to purchase out of pocket mm -hmm. so right. it is yeah okay. definitely. I, I know you mentioned that the uh, optimum wound has been in existence for 24 years well, I right. have been a wound specialist for, or a board certified wound specialist for over 10, and oh, I've been okay. working in wounds for 24. Oh, okay. The company is new. Yeah. It's, it's a fairly new company as of this year. Yeah. So the company itself, but my experience is over, is 24 years. Mm -hmm. What about other parts of the country? Is Lee, I mean, how are you guys making out in other parts of the country? Are they more receptive to um, this type of um, service that you're offering, or are you having the same problems that? we seem to be having here in Hawaii. Well, I think, uh, you know, and thank you for having me on as well. And at first off, I wanted to, uh, of course, for bringing my wife and I on, mm -hmm. brought you a little something. It's one of our Hydro Flask, and oh, it has okay. our logo on it. Great. So uh, Optimal wound, wound Solutions, and uh, we just want you to have that. And again, thank you for having us here. Yep, sorry. Part of our strategy is okay. to grow what we're doing here locally. Yeah. And from that, uh, expand to wherever that may take us. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's VA related, you know, we've got a son that's in the, the Marines. Yeah. So we have a heart and we want to try to help that way. Yeah. But we've been very blessed with what's uh, happening here and mm -hmm. the growth that we are getting. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it takes us beyond Hawaii shores, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Because one thing, again, we, we're concentrating on the military, metro, military and veterans community. But this is like a bleed over into the uh, the civilian community yes. because a lot of things that are developed within the um, military, like for example with the space age pro space program and everything else, a lot of those technologies that were developed, like say, did benefit a lot of the um, you know on the civilian side anyhow. You know, so the taxpayers' dollars were you know they got mm -hmm. some of the money worth mm -hmm. anyhow. The same thing here, okay, where with the large veterans community or military presence over here. Uh, we do have a lot of influence, like say, within the community. So, again, this benefits those on the civilian side, you know, who may not be aware of what's going on. Very, very much so. We we um, work with obviously several civilians and civilian doctors. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the doctors are extremely happy with what they've been seeing mm -hmm. and the communication back and forth, which benefits that civilian and benefits. There are a lot of veterans that are in. Um, places that are not um, a government organization, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so we are able to work with the physicians and couple together with them so that person doesn't have to go to a physician's visit all the time. Right. So that really decreases the, the strain on the patient mm -hmm. or the resident or the veteran going out, and it improves the healing a whole lot quicker yeah. so we we have seen actually now in the facilities that we've been in we're seeing a greater than 50 percent improvement in healing rates wow. in the wounds yeah. with our attention in there and our knowledge coming in and the accountability that that's happening yeah yeah uh want dennis to jump in for just a second yes, on this one also because dennis i know when you go to um washington you talk to a lot of people there. And then with the new administrative administration, there are quite a few people who are hopeful that there'll be some changes within the VA system. Have you talked to anybody back in Washington, like say, who was so inclined to further promote, you know, the systemic change that we need to make sure that our veterans are taken care of? Well, I uh, thank you for having me back on mm -hmm. again, Kelvin. Yeah. Uh, I did talk specifically to both of our U.S. senators, mm -hmm. and my issue with them was. Uh, to uh, reinstate presumed uh, exposure to Agent Orange for Vietnam-era Blue Water sailors. Uh, you won't hear the word reinstate very often. 
Mm -hmm. Because that implies that we were presumed before we weren't, yeah. which mm -hmm. is actually the case. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so everybody out there in the audience needs to know that uh, it's their turn now, yeah. since I've, I've, you are now aware mm -hmm. that both senators have been, I have provided testimony to both senators' uh, staff mm -hmm. that it's their turn now to go to the website for Senator Schatz and then uh, Senator Hirono mm -hmm. and ask them to follow up yeah. and uh, make it happen. Yeah, I think that mm -hmm. um, it, putting, pre I wouldn't say, I don't like to say putting pressure, but I guess that's the only term I can use right now, putting pressure on these uh, our representatives because a lot of them, they seem to sometimes forget, you know, yes. that uh, what they're there for. And again, it's not to be political or anything else, but the main thing that we have to look out for is the bottom line. You know, when they, I hear too many representatives who want to, they're looking for plausible deniability. You know, we're trying to do this, we're trying to do that. Of all the years that I've been involved with the veterans community, we, Dennis, you were well aware of the, the, when we do go to these different meetings with representatives from the different systemic governmental is, uh, agencies that are supposed to be providing um, uh, treatment or services to the vets. It's like, well, we have something in the pipeline. It's coming. It's coming, mm -hmm. you know. And by the time it comes about, you've lost so many veterans or, you know, it was affected families. And people are, you know, they're, they're frustrated and they're tired, you know. And the thing is that I know what with Dennis and what you're, you know, what you're trying to do here mm -hmm. is to, again, alleviate a lot of the, the, the anxiety that they're going through, you know. Because, again, it's not only the physical part of it. It's also about the mental, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't, you know, as far as the issues with suicides within the veterans yes. and the military community, the number of people who are being summarily dismissed from the military because of certain things called, one, one for example, is immature personality development, you know, hmm. where we have somebody that's been to combat, you know, three, four ter terms, and then they come back and they say, okay, well, look, you did a great job, but we find out that you're a little bit too immature for the military, you know, and these people, I mean, this is just one of several different syndromes, you know. And again, this bleeds over into the civilian community because what happens is that if these people are bounced out, you may be wrong term, but when they're dismissed mm -hmm. anyhow, they don't get the full benefits a lot of times that they're entitled to, wow. you know. And again, this is a drain on the civilian, you know, taxpayers because we, you know, through different social services, this is what we have to pick up on, you know. And um, again, I don't want to belabor this too much, but I think there's something that we definitely need to, you know, address. And like I say, that's what we'll be doing here on the program, you know, in more and more detailed ways, you know. And again, it's not to be uh, throwing stones at anybody, but again, it's to make people more accountable. You know, I'm quite sure there's other uh, media sources out there that may be trying to tackle the issue. But I think in every way that even, like I say, if you're not in the military, you need to go ahead and say, and be up to date on what's going on because these are the people who are serving mm -hmm. our country. The one thing I uh, do want to touch on, and you may not have any knowledge of this, and Dennis, you talked about the Blue Water Soldiers, Vietnam. One of the issues that we will be talking about in the future, we're trying to get reputable, knowledgeable individuals who can address this issue, is birth defects within the military mm -hmm. community. A lot of people are not aware, like say, just how extensive it is, you know. And we're not only talking about, you know, in Vietnam, like say, maybe second and third generations. And there may be people out there who've been affected. They're either their parent, one of their parents, may have been in the military, mm -hmm. and something happened for whatever reason, and it was passed down genetically. Mm -hmm. And these people may be entitled, like say, to certain benefits, you know. It's not that you're looking to go ahead and give, more, you know, give more money, uh, government money away. It's the fact that these people are deserving of it because of, you know, the other circumstances anyhow. So I'm, I'm pretty sure at this point right now you may not be aware of it, but we will be, you know, tackling that issue. Dennis, do you have anything on that? Well, it's kind of interesting what you're just saying about the toxic materials toxic chemicals, there, there is a movement that uh, excludes <coughs> Agent Orange mm -hmm. from all the other toxic chemicals, and it could be uh, because of the nature that uh, the personnel and their families were exposed uh, in Agent Orange, actually, it was, a, it was an act of war that uh, we dumped tons okay. of Agent Orange in Vietnam and contaminated right. the waters thereby, and that's alleged. Okay. But then in this other, this other situation, it was at a, at a, uh, a military facility yeah. where the yeah. water was contaminated. Okay. Dennis, I'll tell you what, we're going to take a short break, then we'll come back, we'll continue the conversation along these lines. Okay. okay. Thanks. 
You want to talk about some socially sensitive issues relevant to women? Listen to these guys. Well, I think it's important in Judaism that we don't take the Bible literally. We take it seriously. Okay. I agree. And the, really, the key to understanding Christianity is compassion. If you're compassionate towards other people, you are living a Christian life. And that relates also to dealing with women and men and women issues as well. Mm. Are women and men equal? They're equal. Who's Why better? Be Who's better? <laughs> Depends Tune on in. what. Tune in. Are you looking to get shrunk? Join us on Shrink Wrap Hawaii. My name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist. I see couples, individuals, families, because you know why? Because we all have problems. And if you're curious about shrinks and what they talk about, come look at my show, Shrink Wrap Hawaii, and maybe you'll find your shrink. Okay, you're back with Military in Hawaii, and um, again, I'm your host, Calvin, and this, we have Lee and Kim Lavelle, who's with the Optimum Wound uh, Care, and also Dennis uh, Ige. Um, one thing I touched about on before, like I said, with the birth defects, so people aren't aware of what's going on. Um, again, this is one of those, I wouldn't say, well, I'll just come out and say it, one of those dirty little secrets that they don't talk about, you know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, like I say, who have experienced this with their children or whatever it is, uh, the cancers, the premature deaths, things of this nature, and again, not only with the current situation with the the troops serving. But again, it goes back a long way, you know. And to try to get into politically what happened or whatever or try to, you know, it just doesn't make any sense. The bottom line is this needs to be addressed, you know. And um, again, this is something that I feel very strongly about because there are a lot of people that I've talked to who, you know, they go through this and they feel like they're being, they're alone. You know, because nobody seems to want to address the issue because they're afraid of embarrassing the government or the military. That is not the case. The thing is, is about responsibility as a country to our veterans and their spouses. Not only do we have our veterans are out there on the lines, the, the, the families who are staying back here, the things that they have to go through. Again, you know, and one thing I mentioned on the previous program that people aren't aware of, and we're talking about the effect that as far as certain physical ailments, causes depression, you know. A couple of years back, we lost more dependent e dependents here in the state of Hawaii, 13 in one week. They never talked about wow. that. This is what that, it was a direct spinoff, like I said, what was happening, you know. But again, these are the issues that when you got people out there who are really, they're hopeful that there's going to be somebody that will address this issue for them, mm -hmm. that gives them hope. But if you feel that you've been abandoned, you're about, you know, you're, you're, um, family has been deserted in a way, you know, then what kind of a message does that sound? I mean, does that send? Because you have people out there who are, may want to join the military, but if you have a brother, sister, or somebody come back and say, well, we've been through all this, you know, and this is what's going to happen, then it's like, okay, well, you know, that's fine. I think I'll do something else, you know. So it affects all of us, not only, like, say, you know, the, the status of our military, you know, because now we're more dependent on other uh, ways of filling those gaps, you know. It puts more of a strain. So this is something we legitimately need to ask and answer these questions and anybody out there who's having a problem or had problems in with this situation, you know, please give us a call here or contact us and we'll get you on the air. And again, it's not to be throwing stones, but we need to address this in an open and honest way that I don't think has been done in the past. You know, it's just like when it comes up, it's in the media for a hot second and then it's gone, you know. So we all have an obligation as veterans and people who care, you know, to make sure that these issues are addressed because it does affect all of us, you know. Yes. That's it. Yes. Yep. So um, getting back to the, the wound care, okay, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the, um, if someone wants to, um, uh, diabetes, for example, okay, mm -hmm. what do you have, let's say, in your, I wouldn't, in your, arsenal that uh, they help set up? Well, there are so many different aspects to diabetes. First mm -hmm. of all, to figure out, um, you know, the glucose levels, right? So yeah. all the different aspects. And so there are several times when you have uh, uh, patients or residents or veterans where they come in and they may get glucose monitoring, but they don't have special labs mm -hmm. that we know exactly how the wound is going to heal. Mm -hmm. Or we don't know exactly where the <coughs> sensation is in their, in their lower extremities. Mm -hmm. So we do testings with all those. We do testings to see exactly what um, 
uh, pulsed volume ratios or in readings, uh, where the blood flow is, mm -hmm. um, ankle brachial indexes, and we can do them all right at bedside. Yeah. So that patient doesn't have to go back out to the physician. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that you touched on a little while ago mm -hmm. was depression. Mm -hmm. uh, that is a very big issue within wounds. You have a lot of patients who have family members that come to see them or children or anything and they yeah. have an open wound in their body. Mm -hmm. They're ashamed, they're depressed. Uh, that psycho-social um, issue right. really comes into play. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we try to bring everybody involved with. The quicker we can close that wound and heal it, mm -hmm. the less likely that patient is going to have for infection yeah. and the less likely they're going to be to be depressed. Yeah. So all those different issues play in all the different diagnoses, the diabetes yeah. diagnoses, the kidney failure diagnoses, um, PVD, PAD, decreased arterial blood flow to the lower extremities, mm -hmm. all of those different things we can help monitor and we can help um, give the physician information mm -hmm. so the physician will know the best treatment plan right. to make. Yeah, I know that you mentioned as far as like, um, do you run into opposition from some um, physicians who they take umbrage to the fact that you're bringing something to their attention that they should have been addressing to the patient. Yes. Do you get a lot of it? We don't get a lot of it, but we do uh, get some of it. Yeah. Um, and you know, the whole thing is just working with a physician mm -hmm. and giving them information from other physicians mm -hmm. uh, who can, can they educate each other. And then once we speak to them and um, we give them more information and show them where they can find um, physician to physician information, mm -hmm. usually they're open to it. We do have uh, some physicians who are still a little bit more old school yeah. and they want to use those techniques, which is their prerogative. Okay. Um, I know that uh, in, the, in a lot of some cases where there's certain, uh, they say out of the box or off the wall, the, the, uh, medical treatments, you know, yeah. uh, homeopathic things of that yes. nature where you have the FDA or you have some kind of, the other kind of government agency coming in and saying, okay, well, it sounds good, but eh, we're not going to allow it, you know. Is that when with your, with your group, the optimal wound care? All right. Has there been cases where you may have, they had representatives to go to Washington who tried to address, I mean, you got to get to the root of the problem, you know, right. or the systemic thing, anyhow. Has there been anything uh, going on in, on the national level, like say we try to bring it so it would trickle down? Yes, okay. yes. Well, it, and it's not with our company per se, yeah. but it's with organize, organizations that we're involved with. Yeah. So I am a physical therapist by trade. Mm -hmm. The American Physical Therapy Association mm -hmm. has done many studies and has lobbied, gone to different senators and, and the correct entities that they need to go to mm -hmm. to look at different modality treatments such as yeah. diathermies and... Um, uh, laser therapies and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So that, as you were talking about, it takes time to get things done. Yeah. That takes a lot of time to get things mm -hmm. done. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, there are some aspects out there that we have definitely seen healing, mm -hmm. um, but they're not FDA approved, yeah. so we can't use them. All right. You know? Dennis, what do you think uh, legislatively or whatever, you know, on the government side, what do what, you need suggestions on what we could do to help to bring, uh, well, I guess, like pressure or awareness to individuals who are really responsible to make sure that we're all taken care of? Any suggestions? Well, each of us sitting here at the table, we all have three representatives that mm -hmm. are representing our interests in Congress. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if you're concerned about something, you go to their website. Uh, actually, if it's a if it's a serious matter, then probably the best way to reach out to those representing our interests in at the national and the state level is mm -hmm. through facts. Yeah, because yes. I think one of the things that facts eliminates that's right all electronics. It's a strictly a telephone yeah. uh, type thing, and it shows up in your in basket, mm -hmm. and they will they will respond to that because they're serving <coughs> at your will and pleasure. Yeah, a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of them seem to forget that they are public <laughs> servants, you well, know, and not, you know. Part, <laughs> I guess part of the issue is there is an element in government as exists yeah. and, and most other large in, uh, industries. Mm. Uh, I guess I'm labeling government as an industry now, and of course we're paying the tab. This is, there is an element that loves a backlog. Yeah. So if you can backlog, say, the VA processing of claims, 
there is an element in the VA that loves that. And that's as far as I'm going to go with that. But as long as your listeners and, and your mm -hmm. viewers are aware that this exists, yeah. then the counterpoint to that is the person that is elected to represent your interests in Congress yeah. that funds. Well, that, again, that's one of those dirty little secrets where there's sometimes it's who you know within the system that gets you to a position that's going to be better, you know, better for you. That's called but, corruption. Yeah, but it's the but the, yeah, and that's one of those open, dirty little secrets. I you know, that's my favorite term nowadays. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. that you know where we know what's going on. But again, everybody's looking for plausible deniability. You know, and again with the political things that come on board, uh, it's nonpartisan as far as like say how it shouldn't be on how we take care again of our, our the people mm -hmm. in the in the in the society anyhow. You know, but again that's that. that that's another one, either for Mar Murray Povich or somebody like that. But <laughs> yeah. again, I'm, we're not gonna, I'm not going to shy away from anything here. Like say, right. what you see is what you get. Okay. As I mentioned to the public before, what I say is uh, comes out of my mouth. I'm responsible for, so not anybody else. Anyhow, we're getting down to the wire. I think we got about two minutes left. Anyhow, but uh, Lee, do you have anything you want to say, or you know, I just want to add, you know, the the, the largeness of yeah. wounds mm -hmm. and the industry and what that costs the, the Americans around yeah. close to fifty million dollars a year. Wow. But half of that mm -hmm. is just due to extended stays yeah. because the wounds aren't healing properly. Yeah. And the majority of those mm -hmm. reasons are because they're not using the correct dressings, yeah. the correct techniques. Okay. And that's where we want to help. Right. Okay. Um, Again, uh, when I do have uh, guests that come on, like say they are involved in the business, again, I don't want it to seem like an infomercial or anything else, but the thing is you do bring an important service to the, the community, and if there's anybody else out there, you know, I, we're going to do a follow-up on this okay. anyhow, like make sure, Thank you know, you. and hopefully, like say, any way that I can possibly help out, you know, to, to do that. It's fine. Thank Wonderful. you. Dennis, I think we got 30 seconds or less. Um, uh, anything thank you for having me on board, and it's yeah. always a pleasure to be able to share my concerns with yeah. your audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is one of my th things has always been mm. uh, blue water sailors uh, presumed exposure to Agent yeah. Orange because I was part of that scenario. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm blessed with good health. Good. I've donated a couple of body parts, but that's because <laughs> they quit working, but I'm still moving. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah awesome. that, that, that's a whole book within itself right there. But anyhow, <laughs> we're really down to the wire right now. But in the future, we're going to we're going to talk with uh, this um, Katrina Eagle who, if anybody's out there having a problem with the, the, the paperwork and stuff like that with the VA, that's fine. But, again, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank Dennis, you thank you for much. what you do. And we're going to do a follow-up. Um, again, wish you well on everything, and I hope everybody, you thank know, you, anybody interested gets in touch with you, and we'll take it from there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Sure,